At this point, even the shilliest of the shill sites are having to admit the MCU vastly underperformed in Phase 4. We're now into Phase 5. Obviously, 8-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was not a good start. Somehow, the third film in that franchise is trending to make less money than the first film. Didn't think that was actually possible, but somehow they managed to do that. The next big movie that they have is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Felt like one of the few projects in Phase 5 that was actually bulletproof before we get to the Marvels, which has got Flopperuski written all over it. But there are some numbers trending right now regarding the box office predictions for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 that have some people predicting that it's actually going to flop. I do have the numbers here, and we're going to talk about that in an article from InsideTheMagic.net talking about the potential Flopperuski that could be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 It's safe to say that Volume 3 is one of the most highly anticipated MCU Phase 5 projects currently slated, but oddly enough, its box office estimates paint a different picture. According to Box Office Pro, Volume 3 is projected to take home between $120 and $155 million domestically in its opening weekend and $288 to $403 by the end of its theatrical run. Comparatively, the first Guardians installment made roughly $333 million by the end of its run and the second total $389 million on its run. So going by the predictions from Box Office Pro, on the low end, it might actually underperform both previous Guardians of the Galaxy installments. On the high end, it might just barely squeak by the second iteration of Guardians of the Galaxy, which doesn't really feel like it should be happening. It feels like Guardians of the Galaxy because of the quality of the first film and the success of the second film and the fact that it feels like this third one has kind of been removed from the future of the MCU. This is the last Guardians movie that we're going to have and it's really the James Gunn show. It doesn't feel like they're really setting anything up and even if they are setting things up it's not going to be paid off in another Guardians of the Galaxy movie. This is the end of the road for Guardians of the Galaxy and James Gunn movies have always felt pretty distinctive when it comes to the MCU even as everything has become very homogenized within the MCU itself. So at least it would be a change of pace among people, although I definitely blame James Gunn and the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie for introducing and making the toddler humor, the baby humor, that is very prevalent throughout all the MCU and even Star Wars now for really making that a thing. I blame you, James Gunn, but I don't know why this is happening, and I don't know why they're saying this is going to be a flop. I would not use the word flop. It might not perform up to internal expectations or really even external expectations. You would imagine the third film of the trilogy that closes out the Guardians of the Galaxy story would do better than the first two. As long as the franchise had momentum and the characters are popular. They had big time roles to play as far as Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. People seem to like that. And we also saw them obviously in that Thor Love and Thunder movie. But really that was just like a little bitty cameo at the beginning. I can't imagine... The fact that Thor Love and Thunder was absolutely atrocious, really affecting the box office for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. But certainly, by the predictions that we have now, and maybe they just haven't done the full marketing campaign to get people excited for the movie, you would have expected the models to believe, at this point, that Volume 3 would do better than Volume 2 and Volume 1. And it looks like, in all likelihood, it's actually going to fall right in between the two, which probably isn't what Disney, Kevin Feige, and Marvel Studios are looking for, for certain And although these numbers are inconceivably large to some, it hints at a concerning trend for the studio, which seems to have been cursed with a long-running streak of box office flops since the Infinity Saga wrapped up in 2019. Phase 4 showed some promise with Spider-Man No Way Home grossing over $1.9 billion worldwide, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness raking in an impressive $955 million. However... Eternals underperformed at $402 million worldwide, and the much better received Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings didn't fare much better at $432 million worldwide. And now with the third Ant-Man installment having debuted to less than impressive numbers and trending lower than the previous two Ant-Man films, trouble may lie ahead for the MCU's Phase 5, according to InsideTheMagic.net, who are obviously taking a keen interest in everything MCU because that is related to Disney. There's no denying that the trending is going down pretty much across the board, especially the repeat viewings. I really do believe that's where the MCU popularity has has dropped off the most. It's people would show up for that opening weekend. They would be so amazed and wowed and just like, wow, that's exactly what I wanted to see in this movie, that they would go back the same weekend or they would come back the next weekend with more friends in tow. And maybe three weekends later, they would come back again with more people that hadn't seen it and really got the word out. And they had this really good ability 
to last the test of time and have staying power at the box office. But we're not seeing that anymore. Even Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, it had a tremendously large opening weekend, but it fell off like a rock because the quality wasn't there. Everything's kind of a CGI mess. It's all infused with this like third grade toddler humor that James Gunn introduced in Guardians of the Galaxy, the original film that's basically taken over everything else. But the other filmmakers aren't James Gunn and they don't really know how to make it work. So everything feels really off with the MCU now. So people are showing up to opening weekend, the diehard MCU fans, they're still there, but they're not coming back. They're not telling their friends, you can't miss this. I don't care if you'd ever heard of this hero. You need to go see that movie in the theater. You absolutely can't miss out on this. And not to mention the fact that the Infinity Saga is over. Ever since like the second or third movie within the MCU, what we know as the MCU now, it was always building to something bigger, right? Remember the first time that you saw Thanos in the Avengers movie from Joss Whedon? It was like, oh my goodness, this is a this is a game changer. And it's just slowly built and built and built. And you got this enormous climax. They actually broke it up into two movies and they were must see. You had to go watch them because you wanted to see the end of the saga. We know that they're moving towards two new Avengers movies focused around Kang, but that didn't really bring people into the box office for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because the movie was bad and it's not building up to something that really feels important or special because Kang's already been beaten twice now. You know, once on the Loki show on Disney Plus and once in the theater from Ant-Man. I mean, if Ant-Man is kicking the big boss's ass, he's not really a big threat in the bigger scheme of things. And there's not really that incentive to go and see these movies in the theaters. Not to mention now we do have Disney Plus. And if the movie does flop, they tend to end up on Disney Plus and streaming in very short order. And you can get Disney Plus at a pretty good price, certainly cheaper than taking your entire family to the movies and buying popcorn and all that stuff. So I think people are just sitting it out. And even Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which feels like it should be a must-see movie-going experience, doesn't feel all that must-see anymore. Given that the much tight Volume 3 will conclude James Gunn's Guardian saga, many might have expected a more impressive performance. The first Guardians of the Galaxy budget was reported to be around $170 million, while the third film's budget is estimated to be around $250 million, with the general rule of thumb being that a movie has to make at least twice its production budget to earn a profit. The pressure is on for Volume 3 to perform well, and with moviegoers encroaching superhero fatigue, on top of Marvel's string of less than dazzling Disney Plus shows, it's no surprise that the MCU's former momentum is grinding to a slow stop. It certainly does feel like we're encroaching on like dead franchise territory, especially with the things that aren't like Spider-Man or, or the bigger things like that, you know, making an Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, making a Shang-Chi sequel, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you look at the popularity of the character or actually how much box office revenue it brought in, in the first place. But they're doing a lot of sequels to stuff people don't care about. They changed out all these heroes, but you still would have thought Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 would have been kind of immune because this is the, the Rocket Raccoon story, right? The first Guardians of the Galaxy obviously had a lot of Star-Lord, Peter Quill, but it was also the big Drax the Destroyer story, right? You find out what happened to his family. He gets to avenge their death. The second volume is the Peter Quill Star-Lord story. What's the mystery? He finds out what his parentage is. Obviously, he defeats Ego, the living planet, and this is the one where we meet the high evolutionary who apparently has something to do with the creation of Rocket Raccoon, one of the more popular characters in the MCU. A lot of people like that character. And I think that's a mystery that a lot of people would like to see paid off, but there is no faith anymore that the MCU can deliver good films, even when someone like James Gunn is in charge anymore. Kevin Feige has a lot of work to do to fix the public perception of the MCU as not just a dying franchise that's throwing out like, fan service every once in a while in the hopes that you'll come back to the movie theater where it's basically become the MCU. They've moved all the male superheroes to the side. They try to bring in tons of diversity, race swapping a lot of characters, replacing a lot of the heroes people like. And I just think the way that the MCU is built now with the heroes that they have, it can't help to fail even if you have a team as popular as the Guardians of the Galaxy with a director like James Gunn coming back for the third volume of it. And they might have just destroyed the Golden Goose. There might not be all that much more box office revenue to find in there. And obviously, they've already killed off Star Wars. So Disney has a lot of work to do. I'm actually going to talk about that here tomorrow on the channel. A lot of the enormous box office flops that Disney had last year. Thankfully, none of the Marvel's movies are on that because they haven't flopped to the point where they're losing hundreds of millions of dollars yet. Although Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania might do that for 2023, but it's a very interesting thing that's going on right now. 
Kevin Feige was definitely leaning on and hoping, fingers crossed, that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 does well. Otherwise, 2023 will be just an enormous flop, an enormous bust just for the MCU itself because there's no stopping the final bust for the MCU in 2023. It's the Marvels. Everything about this looks terrible. This is the big box office flop that's waiting for Kevin Feige by the end of the year. If you haven't seen this video yet, definitely check it out. There's also a link in the video description.